Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about using for loops in JavaScript. Now, for loops are basically a special type of loop that we can use, which will allow us to store an index counter as we go through our loop. So every time I go through the loop, I'll be able to figure out uh, at what iteration of the loop I'm currently on. And a for loop is actually really similar to a while loop. In fact, a for loop is basically just a specialized version of a while loop. And I want to show you kind of what that means. So down here, I have a while loop. And this is one of the most basic while loops you'll ever see. I'm defining a variable i up here, and I'm setting it equal to 0. And I'm basically looping as long as i is less than 10. And what I'm doing is I'm just printing out i. So I'm printing out i over here, and then I'm incrementing i. So if we come over to a web browser and I refresh the page, you'll see we basically just get 0 through 9 printed out on the screen, right? I'm printing out 10 numbers, 0 through 9. And this is a very common use case when you're using loops. A lot of times when you're writing a loop, you're going to want to have a variable similar to i basically a variable that's going to tell you what iteration of the loop you're currently on. And generally, we call this an indexing variable. So that's why you'll see people uh, use i here, because it stands for index. And i is special because every time we go through the loop, it basically tells us what iteration we're on, right? So over here, 0, 1, 2, 3, it tells us like how many times we've completely gone through the loop. Like I said, a lot of times in these loops, you're going to want to use an indexing variable like this. And this is actually such a common situation when you're dealing with loops that there's a special kind of loop just for a situation like this. So you'll notice when I do something like this with a while loop, I have to declare this variable all the way out here. And I have to always say i++ down here. And I have to put this condition. Well, we can use a for loop to essentially do exactly this without having to write all of this like extra syntax. So a for loop takes this entire thing and cleans it up a lot and makes it a lot easier and more convenient for developers to use it. But functionally, a for loop is doing exactly what this while loop is doing. Uh, it's just a little bit easier. So that's kind of the difference, well, first between for loops and while loops. So why don't we take this while loop and we'll actually create a for loop just like it. So I'm going to do that right below here. And I'm basically just going to say for, and I'm going to have open and closed parentheses, open and closed curly brackets. So, so far it looks a lot like a while loop. Inside of here though, I'm going to put three different things. So when I have this while loop, I'm only putting one thing up here, which is a condition. When I have a for loop, I'm going to put three different things inside of these parentheses. The first thing I'm going to put is an indexing variable. So you notice up here in this while loop, I have this variable i. And one of the bad things about this setup with this while loop is that I have to like separately declare this variable i outside of the while loop, right? So right above it, I have to say variable i, and then I can access this variable inside of the while loop. In a for loop, the first thing you're going to put inside of this parentheses is this exact line. So we're going to put variable i is equal to zero. Or you can really put, you know, you can put it equal to whatever you want. We'll just have it equal to zero. So the first thing inside of this for loop parentheses is going to be this indexing variable. We're going to create it or we're just going to access it. The second thing I want to put inside this parentheses after this semicolon, I want to put the condition. So the looping condition. Up here it says while i is less than 10. So we want to keep looping as long as i is less than 10. Same thing down here for this for loop. I can just copy this guy and we're going to paste it right in here. And so now this is basically going to loop as long as i is less than 10. That's what this for loop is doing. Finally, we want to put one more thing in this parentheses. And this is going to be the line of code that gets executed after the loop has finished. In our case, we're just incrementing this variable i. So I'm going to copy this i++ and I'll put this down here. Now. Notice that after the i++, we don't need a semicolon. So you need a semicolon after you initialize this variable. You need a semicolon after you put down the looping condition. And that's all you need. So you can see this for loop is basically doing exactly what this while loop up here is doing. It's just the syntax and the way that you write it is a lot simpler. So I can take this variable i, I can put it here, I can take the condition, put it here, and I can take this i++ and put it here. So it just saves me a lot of space and it makes it a lot simpler. So now what I can do is I can just copy this line, 
paste it down here into our for loop, and you'll actually see that, I'm just gonna get rid of the while loop, this for loop is gonna do exactly what the while loop did. So I'll refresh the page, and you can see the code doesn't even change. It's doing exactly what the while loop did. So a for loop, like I said, you know, if you could really take any for loop and just make it into a while loop, but for loops are just more convenient and it's just a lot easier to manage. Um, and now one of the things that a lot of people get confused about with these for loops is keeping track of all this stuff up here inside of the parentheses. But just know that this variable i is our indexing variable and it doesn't have to be called i, you could call it whatever you wanted. Here we have our looping condition. So we're gonna loop as long as i is less than 10. And then over here, this is basically just a line of code that we wanna execute after a loop iteration. In our case, it's just i++, we're incrementing this i variable. And now we can use this document.write, we can print out i, and it tells us what iteration of the loop we're on. So now that we have a for loop, there's so many things that you can do with for loops. And honestly, I would say for loops are probably more common than while loops, just because this is, you know, having to access like an indexing variable is just so common and it's such a common use case. So I'm gonna show you how we can use this for loop in order to loop through the elements inside of an array. So this is a really popular use case for these for loops. If I have an array over here, so let's make an array, I can just call it like friends. And inside of this array, we can just put names of like my friends or whatever. So inside of here, we can put a bunch of names. We can say like Jim, Stanley, and let's say Kevin. So this friends array now has three name values. Now, normally if I wanted to access one of those values in the array, I can just do a document.write and I'll just print one out. So I could say friends and these square brackets zero. And now over here, it'll print out this line. So actually I'll do a uh, break sign here as well. So it's printing out that first friend. If I was to say instead of zero, one here, I'm printing out the second friend, etc. So this is how I can access the elements inside the friends array. And just to kind of reiterate, the first element is always at index zero. So if I wanted, I could actually print out all of the names inside of this friends array using this for loop. So I can say var i is equal to zero, and I wanna loop as long as there's another element inside of this array. So instead of saying i is less than 10, we can say friends, which is that array, dot length. And basically what this will do is it'll keep looping as long as i is less than the amount of friends inside of that array. So this will ensure that we only loop through as many times as there are elements in that array. And then we can keep i++ over here, that's fine. So down here, instead of saying i, instead of just printing out i, what we wanna do is we wanna print out friends at the index of i. So in the first iteration through this loop, i is gonna be equal to zero, and we'll be printing out that first friend. We're printing out the first uh, friend's name. In the second iteration of this loop, i is gonna be equal to one, and we'll print out the second friend in the list. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna refresh the page. You'll see we're printing out all of the names of the people inside of this array. So that's the basics of using a for loop in order to print out the elements in an array. And like I said, that's a really common use case. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.